With vectors, we can also learn about components and things called component form, and we can talk about displacement. So first, I'd like to start with components themselves. So we can break up a vector into what we call components. Now, what I mean by component, I mean pieces. This is what I mean. This is what I was doing in another video where I was showing you with these arrows how you can see which parts are made up. So what I mean by this is let's say I draw myself a nice set of axes here. So I'm going to draw myself a nice black set of just x, y axes. So let's say like this and like this. So this is your, you're used to seeing this. This is what you imagine, you know, when you think about a graph, you imagine about an x axis and a y axis here. Oops, supposed to be an x. Cool. I'm just making it worse. There we go. An x-axis and a y-axis. Now, if I draw myself some sort of random arrow, let's say I draw this one, let's say. So I need an arrow again, or some sort of, maybe I'll make sure my arrow has an actual arrow head. Here we go. So I'll draw myself some sort of arrow here, like this. This is a random arrow here that I just drew. Right? It has a start point, an end point, it has a direction. It has a length. What I can do that maybe I care about what the different pieces are. And what I mean by that, these are these components. These are these projections. So what I like to imagine here is if if I were some sort of magical deity here and I could look up above, it's, it's where the shadow of this thing right here would be on the x-axis. So in this case right here, let's say I want to draw these components. Um, I'm going to draw them as maybe a different color, maybe an orange color, just to make it look really ugly here. So this right here, this would be, you know, if I was projecting it along the x-axis here, it's sort of it's sort of where it would look. So I'm going to draw it like this right here, and then I'm going to draw it like this right here. These are the different components. These are different parts. So what I mean by that is if I took this little piece, now keep in mind, this is a little piece here that I've done. I can move it anywhere I want. So can you see that if, let me just move this one away to make it more clear. It means that if I was looking from the top view here, so if I was, this right here is my eyeball here. This is me creepily looking at this thing here. Right? This is my face. And I'm looking at this thing here. Right? And I'm looking at it. This is the projection of this thing onto the x-axis. It would start here and it would finish over here. This is my x component, what we call it. This is this little piece. Now you can take an arrow and keep in mind, it still has the same length and same direction. I can move it around anywhere I want, but I'm going to put it right here. This is this, we call this the X component. And I can do the same thing, right? If I was this magical or creepy eye here, let's say, and I wanted to take this thing, maybe I can rotate it. Yeah, there we go. Let's say I looked at it this way, and I looked at it, you know, where it would project onto a wall, let's say, over here. Well, then that would hopefully give me this arrow right here. See, this is the length of this thing in that component. That's the Y component. So we often call this, this is why we call this right here the, you know, we can call this right here the horizontal component. This is the vertical component. But we often call this the X component and the Y component. Now this makes a nice little triangle. Right? And in fact, it's a right angled triangle. So we can even calculate something with an angle. We know something with triangles here with right angles. And that's why trigonometry can come in and really save the day. If you remember about trigonometry, uh, that's all about things with triangles, right? Let's, uh, let's say I just draw myself some sort of triangle. Whoops, maybe I should do it properly again with my little arrows here. So I want to draw myself a nice blue triangle like that. So this right here, let's just say I'm drawing myself a nice triangle. So I draw this piece, and I draw this piece here, and I draw this piece here. Let's just say I drew them perfectly, even though I didn't, but let's just pretend I did. I drew them properly here. So this right here makes a nice right angle triangle, hopefully. And that means then I can take this right angle triangle, which has, right angle means 90 degrees, right? So that means this right here is 90 degrees. And this right here is my angle theta, let's say. Then I can start naming these different sides. This side opposite to the angle, we often call it opposite. So I'm going to write opposite here. And then the one that's the longest one, or the one that's opposite to the um, 90 degrees, this is called the hypotenuse. That's what this one's called, hypotenuse. And that means the one that's beside it then is called adjacent. 
And just so you remember how do you do trigonometry, this is what you might have learned in school before, right? That you've learned about hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent. And we can call them A, O, and H for short. Now, if you want to relate them, you can actually do that. You can use a nice little trick. If you're looking with just the opposite and adjacent ones, in other words, the X and Y components, those are, those are relating O and A. And if you remember your trigonometry rules, there's something called tangent. You might have learned about something called Sokatoa. I have other videos that show you how to do this, where we actually walk through all the details of this. This means that sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, and cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. But in this case, I'm going to focus on this one right here. This one means that tangent of theta, in other words, the tangent of this unknown angle, is equal to the O, which is opposite here, opposite over the adjacent. That's often really useful here. Whoops, I need to learn or remember how to spell adjacent here. A-C-E-N-T. That's a useful one. But don't forget, you can also use these other ones. You can use that sine of theta. Whoops. You can also use these ones, right? That The fact that sine of theta, then maybe you want to use that one. And sine is opposite over hypotenuse. I'm just going to write op over hype. I hope that's okay for the short forms here. So sine of theta, if I need that, sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. And cosine of theta, in case I need something with that one, cosine of theta, cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So these right here are these trigonometric helpful reminders here. These are here are the ones that really help you out here. Okay, so cosine is a over h, that's this ka. Tangent of theta is o over a, so opposite over adjacent. And sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. These are going to come in handy in case you want to break up a vector in its into its component forms. And so what better way to do that than to actually do an example. So let's calculate vx and vy. See what's happening here, we have some sort of this could be me being launched off a cliff. Let's just pretend. That maybe makes it more exciting here. A lot of examples in textbooks are really boring. So let's just say I've just been launched you know, off a cliff here. And maybe I'm going to go, my path is going to be like this eventually. But I don't care about that last part. What I care about is just the initial piece. Whoops. So I'll just redraw this. This is me being launched off a cliff here. And I'm going a speed of 10 meters per second. That's actually pretty fast. Remember, every second, that's 10 meters. And I'm being launched at an angle of 40 degrees above the horizon, let's say. So you might want to know, what's my x component of my velocity? So that's why we often call this v with a little subscript x here. Just like we could say vy, that's my y component. If you think of it, that's what we've done here. We've taken this vector here, this arrow, and we've broken it up into its little component forms. This is the x component and the y component. And sometimes you want to figure those out. In this case, it's already drawn. You're just trying to figure them out here. You're trying to calculate them. So I'm going to calculate it. And I can use my little tricks here. I can name these. So I'm going to name this one here. This is going to be called opposite. This one here is adjacent. And this one here is hypotenuse. Again, because of, you know, this is a right angle triangle. So this is hypotenuse. Opposite to my original angle, that's opposite. And the other one's called adjacent. And I'm going to use sine, cosine, and tangent. If I want, I can use this right here. This right here is 10. That's this number, right? This is this meaning of it. So if I want the Vx, let's say, well, I can relate that to something with an angle. I need something with an angle that uses adjacent. If I want to use Vx, I have to have one of them that uses A. And that also uses what I know, which is H. See, I want to avoid the opposite because I don't know this value. Do you notice that I know this, right? I know that the hypotenuse, I know that's 10. I don't know the adjacent. Maybe I could call it hype. I don't know the adjacent value. And I don't know the opposite value. So if I want to find one of them, I want to try to ignore the other one. So if I want to find this adjacent one, I want to use my so or ka or toa, these trigonometric tricks here. I want to use one of them that doesn't have opposite in it, and those doesn't have an O in it. So take a look, that means I don't use this one, I don't use this one. Whoops. That means, hey, I must use. I must use this one. So that's how I know that cos, cosine of theta is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, which in this case right here, let's fill it out. That means cosine of theta is going to be, well, actually, hold on. I actually know this value. I know that it's not theta. 
I know it's actually 40 degrees. So cosine of 40 degrees is going to be my adjacent, which is, I don't know this one, it's just labeled VX, so I'll just call it VX. Divide that by hypotenuse, which is 10. Well, that means then I could state that VX, if I use some algebra, then I want to solve for this. That means I get rid of the 10. That means I multiply both sides by that 10, and that brings it over here. So that means it makes it 10 cos of 40 degrees. Well, then all I have to do is open up my trusty calculator. Sorry, I didn't prepare this beforehand, so I have to wait for this little TI smart for you to open up. I hope it doesn't take too long. What I'm going to show you then is uh, how to calculate that. But i got to make sure I'm in the right mode. Let's see what I was doing before here. I don't really care about these things. I want to make sure that I'm in the right mode. So let's press mode here and make sure I'm in degree mode. That's really important. Otherwise, everything else is going to be wrong here. So all right, I have this. I want to clear my history. Just so that way it's not annoying to look at. So let's do this. Let's do cos of 40 degrees. It should be something between 0 and 1, which it is. Now I take that answer and multiply it by 10. So I have an answer of 7.66. So I can state that, then I can say, all right, clearly then my answer is 7.66. That's what I wanted here. So I'll put that in here. So Vx equals, let's say, 7. Point, uh, yeah, let's use two decimals, I suppose. I'm not really being very careful here. I really should have been more careful. Um, I should have said meters per second, and I should have rounded this to the proper amount of units, but this is good enough for now. We'll just leave it like this. This is the x component here. That's Vx. And in this case, then, if I wanted Vy, I can use the same idea here. With Vy, I want something that hopefully doesn't use A, but it uses H and O here, because that's opposite and hypotenuse. And which of so, ka, toa, which of these avoid the adjacent one? Well, that's one that doesn't have an A in it. So this one has an A, so I cancel it out. That one has an A. That means I want to use sine um, is opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to use that. So sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. And that means then that in this case right here, what can I say? Um, well, I can actually start filling in the values. I know then that the sine of, now theta is not just theta, it's 40 degrees. So sine of 40 degrees equals my, in this case here, what's opposite? That's called Vy. All that divided by the hypotenuse, which is 10. So in this case, I can say that Vy is equal to, and again, I multiply by 10 both sides, so 10 times sine of 40 degrees. And I'll do that on my trusted calculator. So I'll say sine of 40 again, just so I have that number there, times 10. Well, then I can say it'll be 6.427, right? Yeah. So 6.43, let's just say, if we're going to use two decimal points. So 6.43. So that's how I do my Vy, it's 6.43 meters per second. That's how I deal with this.